I'm going to take you through the electrical system uh, that I've created for my kayak. Uh, I start off with a uh, just a fish finder and a 12 volt uh, uh, gel cell battery inside of a Yak Attack cell block. And for the first season, uh, that was all I had, and that worked just fine. But then I started expanding my range and f needing to leave my dock uh, several hours before daylight, so then I had to add uh, navigation lights and a headlight. And it all became too much for the, uh, the little gel cell battery, and it became kind of an ad hoc mess, sort of things plug needing to be plugged in and unplugged to make everything work. So I decided to start start over and design something from the ground up and get rid of the lead acid battery and convert to lithium. So the, the heart of this new system is a 12 volt uh, lithium battery, uh, quite a bit more capacity than the gel cell. I've got it housed in this uh, Pelican uh, 1120 box and it's connected to a cable uh, with a watertight connector. So this is the one part of the system that's completely uh, watertight. So it is, uh, should survive immersion. And if something should short out, there is an inline fuse inside the battery box. Uh, that then cables to a uh, control box, which I designed. And the cable I have here is a, a test cable that I use on the bench top. The, cable in the boat is uh, quite a bit more extensive and it's difficult to see anything because it's routed underneath the gunnel. So this test box uh, has two purposes. One is to provide convenient switches, uh, or I should say control box, uh, switches and fuses for each of the circuits, and then also some smarts to be able to tell me how much battery is left. Uh, and uh, after I go through all the individual pieces I'll show you the, uh, this box in action. So the loads I have now, besides the original fish finder, are all the, the lighting necessary for running at night, or in my case, early morning. So I've got a nav light uh, from Atwood, a uh, Yak Attack uh, Visit Carbon Pro, which I've modified and uh, gotten rid of the batteries and now have it uh, running off the 12 volts. And then a uh, spotlight uh, from Safego, which is uh, marketed as a uh, motorcycle uh, fog lamp. It's got a very narrow beam, which suits my purposes, because what I'm trying to do is avoid objects uh, in the water at night as I'm uh, under power under my uh, electric trolling motor. And then in addition to those uh, three uh, lighting loads, uh, I've got uh, two cameras, both of them are Sony is like this one, they take uh, 5 volts, uh, and one, one thing I like about these Sony cameras is they're, uh, they're splice proof uh, without any housing, and the uh, USB connector for applying power is on the underside, so it's, uh, they're reasonably safe from uh, especially rain uh, splashing. You could get some water up inside there, but I have a cover I can put on to protect the connector. Uh, and then, one other additional piece I've added is a uh, bilge pump, a rural uh, bilge pump. Uh, this boat is uh, pretty difficult to get water out of because it's the way the hole is designed. And usually I only worry about getting water out is when I'm taking it out uh, out of the water and putting it on the dock, at which point the boat is tipped. Uh, and originally I had to tip the boat on its side, actually almost upside down to get the water out. And so now I've added this bilge pump that uh, is set up so that when the boat is tipped and the water all runs to the back, then the bilge pump is basically flat at that point and I can turn it on and, and uh, get the water out. And then the last item part of the system is the charger for the lithium battery. Um, this is a, uh, uh, an Optimate which has a whole series of chargers, each one designed for a specific type of battery. Uh, this one obviously for uh, uh, lithium batteries this type I have. And uh, it's also uh, rainproof, so it can actually be done uh, outside. I can recharge everything in the boat. And then the uh, charger connects to into the system uh, with uh, a connector on the side of my control box and just plugs in. And then I uh, configure the control box to tell everything to charge. Uh, one interesting point of stuff I've been building lately is um, I had to mount the uh, navigation light 
uh, up above the bow of the boat to, to get it above the uh, handle and it was not a, on a smooth surface so I had to make a riser uh, that was fairly wide because the, I didn't have any hard points I could uh, screw it to without going wide. So this is actually a piece of polystyrene foam uh, and I'll sh show you the original material here. So this is what I started with, this uh, Dow uh, scoreboard. Uh, very easy to work with but obviously it's very soft and easily dented. And so what I've coated it with is a product from a hot wire foam factory um, that puts a uh, you basically paint it on uh, it's quite viscous and once it hardens it creates a urethane uh, material that is extremely hard I mean this is uh, just spillage and when I actually apply it to the board I put it on about a sixteenth of an inch thick and it gives a uh, consistency not unlike uh, drilling into aluminum. If you're trying to drill, drill these holes, it's similar to drilling through aluminum. It's a very, very hard material, not easily dented, and protects the foam. It still is nice, lightweight. Um, so it gives you both the advantages of foam and then the ruggedness of a, uh, of a harder product. Uh, each of my uh, loads are uh, connected to the main cable harness with these uh, automotive uh, watertight connectors. Uh, I've used every load is uh, pluggable and uh, and then also uh, color keyed um, the 12 volt everything has a 12 volt circuit I'm using uh, black uh, shrink wrapped uh, on either side of the connector and then my 5 volt uh, circuits are using uh, red. And these uh, plug together with a little captive hook here and uh, one thing I've seen with some products is that uh, this uh, um, snap uh, is tend tends to uh, be able to break uh, if it's cold so I haven't, haven't tested that yet uh, but I'm going to be careful uh, so I don't break them off. So here's the insides of the uh, VisiCarbon Pro and how it replaced the batteries it's just a simple uh, voltage regulator, uh, 7806, and a couple of capa or, uh, passive components, and then the uh, four LEDs that are replaced uh, with the, from the originals with uh, Cree LEDs that were very high efficiency. Uh, since I didn't really know much about the LEDs that came with the original product. Here is a close-up of the uh, front panel of the control box with a display showing the uh, current voltage coming out of the battery of 12.9 currently being 77 degrees Fahrenheit and the current load on the battery is 60 milliamps uh, which is just the uh, microcomputer that's inside the control box. The battery still has 34 percent capacity and at this uh, amount of current that's being drawn, it could run uh, 33 hours at this rate. You notice the hours are jumping around, that there's a small current that a just a change in the LSB of the uh, current sensor is enough to make several hours worth of difference. Uh, um, and then finally we have uh, the amount of wattage uh, being consumed. So I'm going to turn on a, uh, a heavy load, which is the uh, spotlight and things are all change. So you notice that the current has uh, jumped up to uh, 660 uh, milliamps uh, and the runtime has not dropped to 2 hours and 39 uh, minutes and uh, wattage has gone up considerably. Uh, and as you add more loads obviously the number of changes are running sm smaller loads. Um, this uh, spotlight uh, last year I used uh, we're about a maximum of two hours so uh, when I left my dock uh, before sunrise and with a bigger battery this year I'll be able to uh, increase that number uh, probably up to two and a half to 245 something like that so that's uh, how long it takes me to get uh, to the, about 14 or 15 miles away to where the fish are running at the start of the season so uh, I'll turn off the light and things will go back to uh, what they were initially. 
And you notice it uh, takes a few seconds for this display to update. Um, the computer is running on a four second cycle, so the display only updates every four seconds. And during that time, uh, it makes uh, 500 samples of the current sensor. The current sensor, uh, a Hall Effect device, has a pretty high noise rate. And I found that uh, with the use of a low pass filter on the hardware and a, a, high, a large number of samples, I can get a, a very good Gaussian distribution which means I can do a simple average of the, of the, of the 500 samples and get the correct value. Uh, and a, f uh, a lot of testing on that uh, has shown that that actually works very well. I can get uh, pretty reliable data at these low currents. Uh, and the reason that be able to handle all this is that the uh, current, uh, current sensor needs to be, be able to go up to uh, multiple amps, especially when I'm charging, which we'll see later. Um, I decided to, I needed to build this little control box. Uh, obviously I wanted the power switches and the uh, fuses to isolate each of the individual circuits, but the issue with lithium batteries is that uh, they have a, uh, especially this chemistry of lithium battery, has a very flat discharge curve. So except at the very beginning and very end of the cycle, the, the voltage coming out of the battery is flat. And uh, the uh, you cannot tell what capacity the battery has left uh, by watching that voltage uh, because between about 80% and 20% you can see the same voltage. So the way to f figure out what a lithium, if this style of lithium battery is doing is to do current counting or coulomb counting where you keep track of the amount of current that's going in and out of the battery over time and then compare that with a known uh, maximum or, and minim or minimum, depending on how you have it set up. And so what I do is I uh, calibrate the battery, which then stores a maximum count, a current count, and then each time the battery is run, it, that uh, count decreases. You compare that with the original, and that tells you what percentage you have left of the battery. And then when you charge the battery, that uh, uh, current value of the current count goes up as you add charge. Um, there's several different operating modes uh, when we're in, in the run state. Um, for instance, I have a, a mode where I can uh, see how long I've had the box turned on. Uh, BOT is beginning of time. Uh, I often don't remember how long I've been out on the water and so this is just a convenient way to remember uh, how many hours I've uh, put in. Uh, last year I think the longest day I put in was 11 hours uh, and I'll probably have enough capacity to do more of that this year. Uh, one issue I had last year was I'd uh, on the long days is I did uh, run out of power before I got home. Uh, so I had to, the last thing I was usually running is my uh, fish finder and I'd, I'd have to shut that down before I got all the way back uh, and stopped fishing. Uh, another uh, feature I've added is the way to display, uh, dim the display, and that's for nighttime operations. Uh, in particular, uh, uh, you can uh, set it to whatever value you want, uh, and also by dimming the display, you can cut some of the power usage. Um, this little light that's flashing on and off, it flashes once per uh, update cycle every four seconds. Um, and also tells me if the computer is running properly and then when uh, power is turned off it gives me an indication that the value that's in the uh, current counter is stored correctly into EEPROM so it's remembered the next time the power is turned on. Uh, I can't store that in EEPROM continuously because you'd uh, burn out the EEPROM cell if you kept writing it to, uh, say once every four seconds all day long. So I'm going to shut the power off and if you'll watch the uh, light will turn red briefly and that's when it's uh, doing the uh, write to the, it's successfully completed the write to the EEPROM. So it's now successfully written the current value of the charge count into EEPROM and it'll be available uh, the next time it comes on. So now I'm going to put the box in charge mode uh, and turn on the charger. Uh, when, it turns, when I have it turned on it goes through some uh, uh, information about uh, what state the uh, the computer's in, what the counters are, how many cycles, the uh, charge cycles, the, uh, the batteries are seen. So now it's in charge mode, which is indicated by the CM in the middle of the display. 
Um, and I'm going to turn on the charger. And the charger is on, and this charger is now going through its uh, test cycle of the battery to see if the battery is correct or not, or has any problems or not. And once it decides that the battery is okay, it'll start putting uh, current uh, into the box. So now it's starting the current. It's going to ramp the current up to over a couple amps. Uh, as you can see, the numbers are increasing. And it'll go, it's capable of going up to 5 amps. Uh, but I've never seen it go over about 2.5. And, and it basically decides the, the value of the current based on what it thinks the uh, state of the battery is. And you'll notice the uh, time display is changing. Uh, it's telling me how long at this current uh, charge rate it, it believes it'll take to uh, charge the battery up to what its uh, previous calibrated level was. So if I waited an hour and 20 minutes or so, it actually would take probably a little longer because as the battery gets fuller, the uh, charging rate decreases. Um, then it would take it up to 100%. Um, since I'm still in the off season, I usually keep my batteries between about 30% to 50%, at least my lithium batteries. Uh, that helps uh, keep their uh, keep their lifetime up. So I'm not going to let this go uh, more than a minute or so. And then I'll turn it off, and it'll, what'll happen is that uh, my software then, since it doesn't really has to infer that the uh, charging is is stopped. Uh, because and infer that the difference between stop and charging and what the charger does at the end, which is pulse the battery, uh, charge on, charge off over a several minute period to to uh, equalize the cells. So I have the, uh, my computer has to infer that mode versus just turning the power off. So it'll take a few seconds for it to realize that power is completely gone, and then it'll uh, store the current charge count, which will be indicated by an asterisk in the display. So I just turned the power off, and now you can see there's a, a little dot here, meaning that it thinks the power may be off, and it's not sure yet, and it's put up the current, current charge count uh, here, and it's seeing that uh, there's no more charge coming in for about uh, 10 or 15 seconds, and it now realizes, okay, it's stored the value, and it has. And so now it's back into waiting for something else to change, whether to be turned off or the charger to be turned back on. So that's it for charging. Um, we'll put it back onto uh, run mode. And again, I go through a uh, display and then I see operating hours, number of charge cycles, 33 since uh, I've used this battery, and then back to the uh, runtime display. Uh, when I started this project, uh, I already had this cell block uh, where an old battery was uh, used. And I needed some place to put uh, these switches and uh, fuses and electronics, so I decided just to go ahead and use it. It's designed to be uh, rain, uh, rain proof, uh, but not immersion proof, and that was, I was fine with that. And so I just replaced the uh, front panel that came with the uh, cell block and designed my own front panel. Um, which is uh, made out of aluminum, and found a company online called Front Panel Express, which will build you uh, one or more front panels of your own design. And they give you the tools uh, that you can download to do the mechanical uh, drawing. And uh, they were quite easy to use. I, I'm used to using CAD software, and uh, this, this was pretty simple. Uh, and uh, the other big thing is you could import um, AutoCAD format drawings uh, of things that they, their tools couldn't handle. So like these, the cutouts for these switches, there was the, the, it's not just a circle, it's a keyed circle. And so I did that uh, on my drawing package and then imported the, the drawing into their, into their software. So that all worked out real well. And the other nice thing about their tool is basically they charge you for the size of the, the, the panel itself, the material, the type of material, and how it's painted, in my case it's a powder coat, and then they charge you for a certain amount for every hole that's drilled or routed, uh, every letter that's uh, added, and, uh, and you can get a running total as you design it to know how much this thing's going to cost and where to where you want to trim back. 
So one of the things I found is I needed to uh, be a little conservative on the number of letters I had uh, um, routed into the panel because those added up pretty quickly. And depending on what font you used also made a big difference. So I used a pretty simple font and tried to keep my letter count as minimal as I could and still be informative. So uh, I submitted my drawing and then about a week later I got my panel in the mail and it was exactly as I had designed. It looked very good and it's been, uh, I've been very happy with the quality of the, of the product. So that was uh, Front Panel Express and uh, at dot com and uh, say they do uh, real nice work and then even, even for mounting the display I had uh, uh, standoffs uh, pressed into the back of my plate uh, for mounting the display so that worked out very nicely also. So here's a look inside the uh, control box. Um, it has the functions that you would expect uh, for power control, uh, a block of fuses for each of the circuits, a uh, set of five switches to turn each of the circuits on and off, and then a master on off sw switch, switch for in run, putting it in run mode or charge mode over here, and then finally this switch that I use to give information to the computer about what mode I want it to convert to or change. Um, in addition, there's a little circuit board that has a uh, Hall Effect current sensor that converts uh, from current uh, current sense to a, a digital signal that's then fed to the computer. Uh, down here I've got a uh, 12 volt to 5 volt DC to DC converter. Uh, the cameras use 5 volts so through their USB plugs and so I needed to do that conversion. And this is a high efficiency uh, device, 90% uh, efficiency rating. Um, the computer is consists of a uh, Arduino Uno, which is a uh, rocket computer environment that's uh, meant for hobbyists. Uh, the board itself uh, from the original manufacturer is $15. You can get a knockoff for $9. Uh, and then all the build tools are available online for free. And it's uh, very uh, easy to program in a uh, subset of C uh, what you want to do with this computer. Um, Besides uh, getting input uh, from current, uh, I also have temperature sensors, uh, a circuit that uh, gives me the voltage on the battery, and then the computer uh, outputs that information to this uh, LCD display, uh, which was I think was uh, $15 if I remember correctly from Amazon. Um, the signals are fed to this computer uh, through this daughter board I designed on top. Um, it's an analog board that consists of uh, eight, op eight op amps and uh, a bunch of conditioning uh, circuits for the op amps. And they convert uh, each of the analog signals uh, from their original form into a form that uh, can be fed into the microcomputer. In addition, there's a, uh, a uh, power fail circuit uh, that detects when power is failing and then uh, some uh, big uh, large capacitors over here that are uh, designed to uh, keep the uh, computer uh, running in the event of a power failure uh, long enough for the current value of the uh, uh, current uh, being used uh, or uh, being decremented uh, can be stored back in the EEPROM uh, before power runs out. Now that you've seen all the individual pieces, here's uh, where they go in the boat. Um, my cell block is the same place it was last year when I had a battery in it on the dashboard uh, right in front of me. And then uh, moving to the bow of the boat, uh, I have this uh, cover that uh, I've added this year that uh, uh, covers up the forward area to keep uh, boat wake uh, splashes from getting in my bow. Uh, but uh, that'll be tied down uh, with fasteners. Uh, during fishing season. So the battery uh, for the 12 volt system is right in the front. I built up a little piece of foam um, that uh, I cast in place uh, to lift the uh, battery up above the curve of the, of the hole so I had enough space to put it in. And then uh, it's then uh, cabled uh, through this white cable, uh, marine grade cable uh, with the watertight connector uh, back over to the control box. Um, and then and also here are the batteries for the Torquedo motor and I've uh, come up with a new system this year where I can just uh, 
if I need to swap the batteries, I just pull it forward, rotate it 180, push them back in, and, and reconnect the cables. And then for the uh, devices that are being powered, uh, in the front we have the uh, uh, nav light and the uh, forward camera. Uh, and then uh, in the back of the boat, uh, we've got the uh, Yak Attack. Uh, uh, Visicarbon Pro with a light on top. I guess I can turn some stuff on here. So there's the, uh, the you know, light uh, uh, for 360 light and then the uh, uh, the spotlight there. And then uh, the other camera mount is uh, on this uh, RAM set up here, and also this is the camera I'm shooting with right now, so it's not currently attached. And then finally is the uh, bilge pump, which is buried deep in the back of the boat, and it's uh, kind of uh, under here. Uh, it's getting set at an angle, so it picks up the water when the bolt is tilted. So uh, that's all the electrical comb pieces uh, in the 12-volt system, and uh, all the batteries, and... Uh, that's uh, what the biggest project for this year.